Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing the Champions Report on the WBA, the World Boxing Association. As we will cover all championship belts from 122 all the way to heavyweight and do a recap from the year of 2023 and what happened with all those titles and the champions that held them. Um, and we'll do a little bit of a preview on each belt heading into 2024. Now, before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, the um, champions report now on the WBA. We start at 122 pounds, super bantamweight. And we look at the champion entering the year was Mirajan Akhmadaliyev, who is the undefeated unified champ. He had both the WBA and IBF belts. And... Um, in April, he made an, a mandatory, uh, well, he defended his titles against his mandatory number, uh, IBF mandatory number one contender, uh, former Bantamweight champion, Marlon Tapolis of the Philippines. And in a shocking upset, Tapolis would defeat Akhmedaliyev by a 12 round split decision. After Akhmedaliyev just got a slow start, first half of the fight, Tapolis won. He closed the gap in the second half but it was too little too late as Tapolis got out with a split decision. The WBA then opened the door for Tapolis to challenge for the undisputed title against the winner of Inoue and Stephen Fulton in July. And uh, Naoya Inoue, the monster, would dominate Stephen Fulton, beating him in eight rounds on a TKO, and that set up an undisputed title clash for December between Tapolis and Inoue. And Inoue would dominate Marlon Tapolis in that undisputed title clash and become the WBA and undisputed champion at 122 pounds and also becoming the first ever two, two uh, division four belt undisputed champion in the four belt era. So that was huge. Heading into 2024, it looks like Inoue already has his year kind of planned out. He's looking to fight his WBC mandatory challenger, Luis Neri first, defending all four belts against him. Then in September, the plan is for him to come back and fight Marajan Akhmadaliyev, who is the WBA mandatory challenger and former champion. And then he wants to close out the year in a third fight. Right now, the opponent's kind of up in the air on who that is going to be. But anyway, I think if he stays at 122, I think he's going to go coast to coast as the WBA and undisputed champ. But we'll see what happens. Things can change, but we'll see what goes down. 126 featherweight um i believe in this year lee wood entered the year as champion entered 2023 as the world champion in february he would make an optional defense against Marie, mauricio lara and he was winning the fight pretty handily outboxing lara and then lara landed a money left hook in the seventh round that put lee wood down hard wood would get up but his corner would stop the fight due to the way he looked. They didn't think he looked good enough to continue. And Mauricio Lara became the world champion. Um, but there was an automatic rematch clause for Lee Wood. And at the end of May, they would uh, sign on to fight again. But Mauricio Lara would lose the title on the scales the day before when he came in way overweight. The fight would go forward with the vacant title on the line for Wood, but not for Lara. And Lee Wood would outbox and outclass Mauricio Lara over 12 rounds in their rematch as he became a two-time WBA champion. Then in October, Wood would put that title on the line against former two-time champion Josh Warrington in an all-UK battle. And this time, Warrington would be dominating Lee Wood like Wood was dominating uh, Mauricio Lara earlier in the year. And Wood would be the guy to land a crisp, hard combination um, in the seventh round that hurt Josh Warrington badly, and um, the referee would end up stopping the fight as Lee Wood retained the WBA title. But prior to the fight, Lee Wood said this would likely be his last fight at 126, and he um, meant that as about a week or two later, he gave up the WBA title, declaring it vacant. The belt ends the year vacant. Heading into 2024, the vacant title will be on the line in early March when number one contender um, uh, uh, Aldebek Kolmatov, the uh, undefeated fighter, knockout artist, is going to take on Raymond Ford of the United Kingdom. 
Big fight right here for the vacant belt taking place in early March. I think Kolmatov is going to get the victory and become your new champion. And then we'll see what happens after that because he's a top rank guy. And top rank also has um, Luis Alberto Lopez, the, the IBF champ, and WBO champion Rafael Espinosa. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out. I'm really looking forward to it with the featherweight belt. Then we look at the um, super featherweight uh, title at 130 pounds. And over there, uh, entering, entering the year as champion was, uh, was Hector Luis Garcia. Uh, Garcia would move up to 135 in January to challenge Gervonta Tank Davis for the secondary belt at 135. And he would come up short, uh, getting um, knocked out in that fight and would remain sidelined most of the rest of the year before returning in November on the Benavidez Andre undercard to make a mandatory defense of his title against Lamont Roach Jr. Good chess match between him and Lamont Roach. Back and forth kind of action. Um, Roach, I believe, would put Garcia down in the 12th round, but it would be a behind the head shot that was clear. And um, the referee ruled it a legitimate knockdown. And uh, that caused the judges to give Roach the split decision victory and become the new world champion. Um, Roach would end the year as the champ. Heading into 2024, I believe Lamont Roach is, well, first off, Lamont Roach is a free agent, so he can pretty much sign with whoever he wants. Not too clear yet on who that's going to be, but um, Lamont, I, I believe Hector Luis Garcia has some grounds to uh, get an, uh, an immediate rematch. And I think, I'm leaning towards he's probably going to get that because that punch was clearly behind the head and the ref ruled it a clean knockdown. So I believe they uh, they will look at it, they will overturn, not overturn anything, but they'll order an immediate rematch. If not, unification is just really up to where he goes and what he does. And um, it's just gonna depend on which uh, promotional company he signs with to look at the opportunities that he has and whether he can go coast to coast. But I'm happy for Lamar Roach, he's a good fighter and it was nice to see him become a world champion. 135 lightweight. Um, there was actually two belts at lightweight entering the year. Devin Haney entered the year as the undefeated WBA super champion and also the undisputed champion. Um, he would defend all four belts against Vasily Lomachenko in May and uh, and walk and escape with a controversial 12 round unanimous decision in a fight that majority of people thought he lost, myself included. Um, he would hold on to the belts for the majority of the year, but right before a planned move to 140, he decided to vacate all the titles as he was willing to hold on to them as long as he could land a big fight, but um, no big fights really were looking imminent or imminent at 135 following his venture to 140, so he decided to give up all the belts. Now, Gervonta Tank Davis entered the year as the undefeated secondary champion or the regular the regular champ at 135. In January, he would take on Hector Luis Garcia and um, outwork him, dominate him to an eighth round TKO victory as he retained the, the belt. Um, he would move up to a catch weight and fight Ryan Garcia in a super fight in April. So the title did not go on the line the rest of the year. But when Devin Haney vacated all his belts at the beginning of December, technically Gervonta Davis was upgraded to the only WBA champion. As a couple years ago, you might remember, the WBA started consolidating all their belts down to one champion per division. And uh, this was one of the last three divisions that needed that to happen. So now Gervonta Tank Davis is the only WBA lightweight champion at 135 now. And what's gonna happen with his year coming up, we really don't know. Um, Isaac Cruz has been the favored uh, option, you know, in a rematch. And he's still technically the number one contender, but according to the Valenzuela Colbert rematch, the winner of that fight was fighting a, a lightweight final eliminator. And Valenzuela impressively knocked out Colbert in their rematch. So it's kind of unclear what's gonna happen next for Davis. I personally feel he's probably gonna keep it within the PBC, but I really hope he attempts to unify belts against Vasily Lomachenko if Lomachenko wins the IBF title. I want to see him in some kind of super fight stepping up the class. I think Davis has the pressure on him. I think the first half of the year, he might take on Cruz. He might take on Valenzuela. 
um, and get them out of the way. And then I think he might be primed for a big time showdown with Lomachenko in the second half of the year. So we'll see. Excuse me one second. 140, junior welterweight. Um, entering the year as champion was Alberto Puello. Um, he was scheduled to make a mandatory defense of his belt against um, uh, Ishmael Barroso, but that fight got, uh, but Roly Romero was able to slide in and take that shot. Uh, the WBA would grant Romero an opportunity. But then Alberto Puello tested positive for performance enhancing drugs and he was stripped of his title immediately and suspended. So the title would go vacant and the WBA would order Romero to fight Ishmael Barroso. And in June, they would collide for the vacant title. Barroso at 40 years old was out working and even hurting Romero at moments, but Romero started to get back into fight in the later rounds. And he definitely uh, stunned Barroso in the ninth round and jumped on him, but Barroso was still throwing back and the referee controversially jumped in the middle of them and stopped the fight in a bad, bad decision. Um, and Roley Romero became the new WBA 140 pound champion. So O'Hara Davies of England was the mandatory challenger. He was ordered to fight Romero, but then Romero um, decided, well not decided, he uh, claimed that he had an injury and needed an exception from uh, from fighting for a while and into 2024. The WBA granted that, and now what's heading into 2024, Roley Romero is the champion. There was talks of a showdown with Ryan Garcia. That's off the table now as Garcia is negotiating with Devin Haney, but um, O'Hara Davies and Ishmael Barroso are colliding in a final eliminator with the winner to get the shot at, um, at Roley Romero probably towards the middle of the year. I really think any of those guys can, can when the smoke clears, can be the world champion. And then I think um, it's kind of wide open to see what can happen in the second half of the year for whomever, whomever the WBA champion is. So it's going to be an interesting year for the WBA title at 140. 147 welterweight. There was two champions entering the year at 147 pounds. The super champion was also unified belt holder Errol Spence Jr. who was undefeated. He waited around for a super showdown for the undisputed crown with uh, Terrence Bud Crawford in, um, uh, what was it, in October? I know, in, in July, I'm sorry. And they would, they would collide and Crawford would dominate Errol Spence Jr. stopping him in nine rounds to become the undisputed world champion um, and grab a hold of the WBA super title. He would not defend the belt before the end of the year and is still currently the WBA super champion and the unified welterweight champ. Um, and heading into uh, 2024, uh, the plan right now for, for um, Crawford is he's likely going to rematch Errol Spence Jr., but we don't know yet for sure if it's going to take place at one at 147 in a rematch um, or if the rematch will take place at 154. I'm leaning towards 154, and I think Errol's, I think Terrence Crawford's going to give up his belt when he does that, and then we'll see what happens. Now, the regular belt at welterweight 147 entering the year was held by undefeated Imantis Stanionis. Stanionis, um, after a year layoff, was set to make a mandatory defense of his belt against undefeated Virgil Ortiz Jr. That fight got postponed a couple times, and then finally in July, when it was supposed to happen, Virgil Ortiz fainted, and um, the, bout, the bout was called off completely. Stanionis tried to, make, to get a fight in with Keith Thurman before the end of the year, but that fight ended up falling apart. And right now, it's unclear what Stanionis is going to do, heading into 2024 as the belt, the regular belt did not go on the line at all. My personal opinion is that before Stanionis even fights, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford are going to sign for a 154-bound rematch. Errol, uh, Crawford's going to give up his belt, and Imanta Stanionis will be upgraded to full champion. Now, following that, it's going to be interesting to see what goes down because three of the four belts at 147 will be owned by the PBC. And it's going to be interesting to see who comes out of it um, with which matchups. I think Stanionis can attempt to unify belts against Boots, 
Mario Barrios, or he could even fight Cody Crowley. He might end up having to make a mandatory defense against his number one contender. Okay, it's going to be an interesting year at 147, but I do believe we're going to close it out with one champion at 147. 154, super welterweight. Entering the year as, as WBA and undisputed champion was Jermel Charlo. Charlo would never defend the belt as he um, had an injury that kept him out of the first half of the year and making a defense against Tim Zhu. Then um, I think around June, July, he got a golden opportunity and offer to move up two weight classes and challenge Canelo Alvarez for the undisputed uh, super middleweight title at 168. He would take that, he would lose a one-sided decision there, and then he would claim that he's moving back down to 168. He would be stripped of two of his belts, and, but he would end the year as the WBA and WBC champion at 154. Now, heading into 2024, I have no idea if he's going to give up this belt or hold on to this belt. The WBA, I'm sure, is going to order a mandatory shot be, for somebody, or they might do a super final eliminator between Ismail uh, Madrimov, who's the number one contender, and number two contender, uh, Magomed Kurbanov. Um, if they do that, then Charlo would have till the second half of the year, most likely, but he might end up giving up this belt. And I see him getting big fights, but he might just hold on to the WBC title and say fuck it to the rest of the belts. We'll see what happens. We'll see what comes out of it. I'm waiting to hear, but it should be an interesting year at 154. 160, middleweight. Triple G uh, entered the year as champion, I think. And then he vacated the, IB, uh, the WBA title instead of fighting his uh, mandatory challenger, Arizlandi Lara. So Lara was then upgraded to full champion. This was one of the divisions where we had two champs entering the year. Lara was the regular champ entering in, and he was upgraded to full champ. Lara was then ordered to fight Michael Zarafa of Australia, but the WBA allowed him to make an optional defense against Danny Garcia first, as Lara and Garcia were scheduled, um, starting in August, they were scheduled to collide at a catchweight of 155 for Lara's middleweight title. That fight never materialized. It got switched over to December, um, and then it still never happened. So now that is still the plan heading into 2024 for Lara to fight Danny Garcia. If that happens, which I think it will, I think he's gonna beat Danny Garcia, and then I think he's gonna have to make a mandatory defense against Australia Michael Zarafa in the second half of the year, and I think Lara beats Zarafa too. But we'll see what goes down. I just wanna see him get in a ring, and fighting twice would be fantastic. But we'll see what happens with the 160 pound title. 168 super middleweight. There was two champions entering the year at 168 in the WBA. First was super champion Saul Canelo Alvarez. Canelo in May would defend his WBA and undisputed title against um, against his WBO mandatory challenger John Ryder. He would dominate him over 12 rounds, uh, landing two knockdowns, really busting him up to a one-sided 12-round unanimous decision to retain all four of his belts. In September, he would defend his four titles against junior middleweight champion at 154 and undisputed champ Jermel Charlo, who moved up to weight class to fight him. One-sided fight here for Canelo again. Scored a knockdown and a one-sided unanimous decision as he retained the undisputed title at 168. He closes, closes out his year as champion and heading into 2024, it doesn't look like the WBA is going to order Canelo to make uh, his mandatory against his regular champion. It doesn't look like they're going to do that to consolidate that belt. And the reason being is, you know, Canelo's such a big name that the WBA doesn't want to try to force him and have him give up a belt uh, to fight a fighter that's not a big name fighter. So that's kind of where the WBA lands on things. I understand that to an extent, not that I fully agree but I understand it to a full, to an extent. Um, and uh, so at least for the time being, I think Canelo goes coast to coast this year. I think it's gonna be either Jamal Charlo or Jaime Manguia in May. And then I think David Benavidez in September. I also think there's a chance he fights Terrence Crawford at some point, but what we gotta wait and see. But um, I do believe Canelo goes coast to coast as WBA super champion. Um, and uh, the only way, in my opinion, if I had to predict, he only loses the belt if he vacates it 
um, unless he were to get upset, upset in the ring. So we'll see. The regular champ at 168 entering the year was undefeated David Morrell Jr. Morrell would return in June and destroy um, a guy named, um, God damn it, I'm forgetting his first name. Oh, Yamaguchi Falchao. First round knockout, retained his belt. He returned at the end of the year on the last Showtime uh, telecast uh, and knocked out Cena Agbeko. I think that was a second round TKO and retained his world title again. Uh, so Morrell enters this year as the regular champion. Um, I really don't believe he's going to get Canelo in the ring in 2024, but um, he's trying to lobby and get David Benavidez in the ring. Um, I think the WBA should order him to face his mandatory if he doesn't get Benavidez next, and that would be a guy named Christian Mabili, so who's undefeated and on the rise. So I hope that um, he at least gets his mandatory challenger and somebody solid to fight him in 2024. Um, 175 light heavyweight. Uh, Dimitri Bivol entered the year as the longtime WBA light heavyweight champion of the world. Um, he would not defend that title though all year until December on the day of reckoning card when he would take on Lyndon Arthur the United Kingdom and dominate him over 12 one-sided rounds as he would retain his WBA light heavyweight title. Entering 2024 for Bavall, it's really undisputed. He wants to fight the winner of Better Be of and Callum Smith next. I honestly think it's going to happen next. I think the nation, the whatever they call it, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, I think they're going to pay for this undisputed title clash between these two, and I think it's going to come. And I believe Dimitri Bavall will beat Arthur Better Be of and become the undisputed light heavyweight champion. Um, following that, he might make a mandatory, but I think. And as long as he stays champion, he's going to go coast to coast again as your WBA light heavyweight champ at 175. We'll see. Uh, 200, cruiserweight. Arsene Goulamirian entered the year as the reigning and undefeated champion, but he would never defend the belt. He was supposed to be in line for a unification bout against Lawrence O'Coley, but Lawrence O'Coley would get upset against Chris Billum Smith and lose his belt. And Goulamirian stayed out of action the, re the remainder of the year just... I think around November, the WBA did order Goulamirian to make a mandatory defense against four, his number one contender and former two-time champion, Unier Dorticos. Haven't heard anything on that, but I do believe that that's gonna be the next WBA fight. I am honestly gonna pick Dorticos to win, but I do think it's 50-50. Dorticos is definitely old and past his prime, uh, older and past his prime, but, um, and Goulamirian I think is a solid fighter. I just can't understand why he doesn't fight and stay busy. But we'll see, and I'm hoping that becomes the thing um, with uh, with um, uh, Dorticos, and I hope they clash in 2024 and start mixing it up for the WBA belt. And finally, heavyweight. Uh, we had two champions at the beginning of the year. Alexander Usyk was the super champion and unified world champ, and Danny Dubois was the regular champ. Neither one of them would fight until they decided to consolidate belts as Dubois attempted to become the unified champ and uh, against Usyk in August. Um, Usyk was controlling the action and doing well, and then in the fifth round, a questionable low blow was landed by Dubois that sent Usyk down hard and in a lot of pain. The referee ruled it a low blow. Um, Usyk was given five minutes to recover, and when he, after he recovered, he took back control of the fight, dominated, and stopped Danny Dubois in nine rounds. But there was a controversy on that punch and whether it was low or not. I personally feel it was on the lower part of the belt line, but I, I thought it was clean. The WBA took a look at it after Dubois' protest and decided that it was not a low blow. And um, Alexander Yusek would retain the unified uh, heavyweight championship. He would not fight for the end of the year, but he would get the good news that February 17th um, from the Kingdom of, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Alexander Yusek gets his opportunity at the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world when he battles undefeated WBC champion Tyson Fury. Now, there is a rematch clause for both these fighters if they lose. I believe they'll fight in a rematch. And I don't know what happens with the WBA belt after that. I think because that was the last mandated uh, title belt on the line. I believe the WBA is going to stick with the Tyson Fury Usyk rematch. Um, I think one or two belts are going to go vacant. 
But I do believe the winner of that fight will um, still be champion and compete for it against the other in a rematch later in the year. Now, I believe Tyson Fury is going to win. I'm giving him the slight advantage. I do believe, though, Usyk has a much better chance than he's ever had. And I'm really looking forward to that on February 17th for the undisputed title. And we really don't know what's going to happen after that fight goes down. So that's it. That's what I got. That is the WBA Champions Report, the World Boxing Association, the oldest of the governing bodies. And I covered all champions and title belts from 122 all the way to heavyweight. Did a recap on the year. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you look forward to a great 2024 for the world titles. And that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.